Game one of our double dip on ESPN. It begins at the Carrier Dome. Clemson visits Syracuse on a Friday night in October. And that was the prologue almost four years ago to the day. Flashback to Friday, October 13th, 2017. Clemson, number two in the land, the defending champions. They ran into Eric Dungey, who threw three touchdown passes. Travis Etienne, a 52-yard run to tie the game in the third quarter. But Cole Murphy's field goal, the difference in a Syracuse win. It was the biggest win for the Orange since a 1984 upset of number one Nebraska. Anish Rapp, Mike Golick Jr., Taylor McGregor down on the sideline. So glad you could be with us. Clemson coming off this bye week, and man, all the hot takers, all the doomsday proclaimers saying this is the end of Clemson. They're three and two. Do you buy it? Not for a second, Anish. This bye couldn't have come at a better time for a team that's been banged up and looking to get its offense back on track. They can look back at Boston College and build on some of these things in the bye. What they did in the rushing game well, protecting DJ Uyunglele better, and allowing him to be a part of that run game, Anish. That's all going to set up this downfield passing attack that Clemson fans are waiting to see come alive. The offensive numbers this year for Clemson way down from a season ago. A lot of that is on the quarterback. But Dabo Swinney told us DJ Uyunglele is like Steph Curry in a shooting slump. And he said there's going to be a reckoning if you're ready to write him off. In this game, however, the best offensive player plays running back for Syracuse. It's a national stage for Sean Tucker tonight. If you haven't seen him yet, in person or on screen, you've already read his name atop the rushing standings in the NCAA right now. Sean Tucker can do it all. A pass catcher out of the backfield, low, great change of pace back, and he has got the numbers every which way you want it, Anish. Tucker's numbers through six games, comparable to Reggie Bush's numbers through six games during Bush's Heisman season. Opening kick next. Clemson won the toss, deferred, so Syracuse will receive. BT Potter sends it away. Trevor Pena from the five. And is swarmed well shy of the 20-yard line. And we see the Syracuse offense, the quarterback now. The Mississippi State transfer, Garrett Schrader, two straight 100-yard games. We talked about Tucker's ability to run. This is not the Oranges, the new fast offense, where they sling it around and they throw the ball. It's a ground attack, and the second part of that ground attack is the quarterback. And it makes life easier on everybody, opening up lanes for Sean Tucker and giving this offensive line an extra beat for defenders that have to account for one more dynamic playmaker in that backfield. Tucker, the ACC's leading rusher in the backfield. And on first down, the give is to Sean Tucker. And he rips off a run of seven yards, four straight 100-yard games for Tucker. Number one in the nation in all-purpose yards. Number two in rushing behind Michigan State's Kenneth Walker. You start to run out of superlatives with the season he's had. He's the real deal, and he's, and he's so smart. You're going to watch him help and set up blocks for this offensive line all night. Schrader to throw. It's Anthony Queeley on the screen. And he's going to be close to the marker. And he's got an up for a first down for the Orange. This is a Syracuse offense that had some concerns injury-wise on the offensive line. Aaron Service, their starting center, got banged up against Wake Forest. He's back out there, so is Chris Bleich. 
service, a huge boost for them. 54 consecutive starts coming into this game. Schrader again on the slant. It's caught by Courtney Jackson. And he's tackled immediately after a gain of five yards. Clemson defensively, Mike, still championship caliber despite injuries to their two starting D tackles, Brian Brzee and Tyler Davis. This team gave up their first rushing touchdown of the season the other week. This is an outfit that knows exactly what it's doing. Despite the bodies down, Brent Venables, their defensive coordinator, has this group coached up and ready to rock. Clemson crowding the box. Schrader, his first rushing attempt. And tackled right back at the line of scrimmage by Tyler Venables. He and brother Jake, both the sons of defensive coordinator Brent Venables. And the guy you're going to see in the middle of that defense is one Clemson fans have been used to for a while. James Skalski, the captain and commander conductor of that unit here. The neck roll is always going to stick out, but if you lose sight of him, he's going to be that coach on the field, demonstrative, getting this very complex Clemson defense that's going to show you a lot of frames lined up. He's been around for a while. This is his third trip to Syracuse. On third down, Schrader, pressure coming from Miles Murphy. Schrader able to escape, pitches it forward to Chris Elmore for a first down. The one they call Rhino. Chris Elmore embodies what this Syracuse team wants to be about. Their offensive coordinator, Sterling Gilbert, called him the most selfless player on this team. Last year, starting eight games at left guard. This year, moving back to fullback. He's exactly what you're looking now, for. Chris Bleich, the Florida transfer, the starting left guard for Syracuse, limping off the field. And to freshman Kalen Ellis now. Tucker, right up the middle, makes the first man miss, as he usually does, to pick up four more. Anish, you mentioned Kalen Ellis going into the game, saw action already this season. And as a young player coming in, I always thought it was almost better to get thrown in on the fly like this. You don't have time to overthink things, over go through the lines and the formations you're going to see in your head. you got to go out there, read and react right now. And of course, listen to Aaron Service, the veteran next to you at center. Ellis started last week. They call him Big Hawaii. Schrader throwing, and it's incomplete. He wanted Jackson. It sets up third down. Andrew Makuba, the safety, broke it up. We've seen on all these short throws by Garrett Schrader and Nish, this Clemson defense playing down, playing tight and physical. You're going to have to, for both these offenses, demonstrate an ability, at least situationally, to go deep, brush them back a little bit off the plate so that they're not jumping routes like that, potentially taking it away. Yeah, from Syracuse this year, they've struggled to throw the ball downfield. Clemson has as well. Third down, six to go. Schrader's pass is caught in Clemson territory, shy of the marker. Devon Cooper with his sixth catch of the season and an early decision now for Dino Babers, whose decision-making came under fire the last couple of weeks. This one's certainly easy, though, with the running back you've got in the backfield. Early tone setter getting outside of this tackle box. The crowd likes the call. Schrader, quarterback keeper, and he sneaks ahead for the first down. These are some big boys playing quarterback today. 6'4", 230 for Garrett Schrader. And you saw Balen Spector, great linebacker for Clemson, bounce right off him in that spot here. This two-headed monster in the backfield, fully loaded today. Oh, there's a two-headed monster at linebacker for Clemson. You mentioned Skalski. He and Spector dubbed the Bruise Brothers by Dabo Sweeney. Tenth play of the drive from Clemson territory. Tucker across the 40. And he gets nine on that first down run. And this might be an opportunity now for Syracuse to take a shot at second and one. Perfect area of the field, Anish. You've got still plenty of room to work with. You're not, not quite down in the red zone just yet here. Pump something short. Try and burn him deep. Instead, it's Schrader on the keeper. Got away from Skalski. Flag down. A first down if it stands. It's coming back. Personal foul, face mask, offense number 16, 15-yard penalty, 
First down. A rare face mask call on the quarterback. Not often you get one of those, but again, that's Garrett Schrader's running style. He's not afraid to get in there and mix it up with these guys, getting on the edge against James Skalski we're talking about. And every defender in the country, my father, the former defensive lineman, standing and applauding that an official <laughs> actually called it for once. So it backs up Syracuse to its own 47. It'll bring up second, second down and 16. They need to get to the Clemson 37. Abdul Adams, who did not play last time out against Wake Forest, into the game at running back. Three-man pressure. It's the screen, and Clemson blows it up. Trenton Simpson in the backfield, another big loss, and it brings up third and Chittenango. Trenton Simpson is an absolute missile at linebacker. We keep heaping praise on this group. We're going to see two great linebacking cores on both sides. Now for Syracuse, it's about avoiding the big mistake. You cashed in your screen chip there. I'd imagine some sort of run up the middle, try and spring one against a lighter box look. But Clemson's going to come after you. Make no mistake. That's how Brent Venables and this defense are wired. It's Adams. And he is driven back by Balen Specter. And the punt team will come on. In years past, the punter has been a strength for Syracuse. Riley Dixon, Sterling Hofrichter, Nolan Cooney. James Williams has struggled. We saw him shank a couple last week. He did not make the trip to Florida State the week before. Going to be a critical part of tonight. Both teams coming in struggling to put up monster points on offense. So every bit of this field position battle going to be crucial tonight at punter you here will brown waiting at the 15 yard line and a fair catch is made oh, at the 22 clemson's had a bye week they feel their offense is ready to explode we get the first look at clemson on the other side After Clemson's win against Boston College almost two weeks ago, DJ Uyunglele played his best game after the game, though. He went back out on the field. This is well past midnight. Was working on his throws. Dabo Sweeney telling us this is who he is. On first down, Uyunglele completes to Justin Ross. Part of Clemson's offensive struggles have fallen on the wide receivers. They've got to help their quarterback out a little bit, too. They do, but we know DJ's looked a little off this season. We saw him in limited action last year. He wowed against yeah. Boston College and Notre Dame and now comes in with the full pressure of what it means to be a Clemson quarterback. That's a hallowed position now in college football. And early in the season, some growing pains for a young player, but still an uber talented one. He'll be without a couple of wide receivers today. No E.J. Williams. Braden Galloway is tight end. Out as well. The handoff is to Kobe Pace. And he'll move the chains for Clemson. The Tigers have had to reshuffle their offensive line in recent weeks. They get Will Putnam back today. But Hunter Rayburn, who had been starting at center, unavailable today. So we're watching Mason Trotter make his first career start at center. Matt Bockhorst, who had played center, moves over to guard. Oweyunglele. Incomplete, threw it a little behind Ross, who wants a flag. Garrett Williams in coverage. This is a Syracuse defense that likes to get after you. Big on sacks, big on TFLs. The ACC leader at 3.67 sacks per game. And you saw it there, Anish. You mentioned the reshuffle in the middle. Bockhorst has played center, but that communication, your vantage point a bit off. That time a rusher sneaks through in the middle. That's where Clem or Syracuse is going to try to attack them right up the gut. From the 37. We ungle away to Davis Allen, and it's Williams who gets him in the backfield for a loss. It's third and long.
And now this is exactly where you've struggled here for Clemson as an offense to push it deep. And on the other side, this Syracuse linebacker core, multiple, going to give you a bunch of looks and blitz from everywhere. Empty set. But we on the way under pressure and taken down by Cody Roscoe, one of the ACC sack leaders. So that first drive for Clemson out of the bye week, we wondered, would the offense look any better? And the early answer, no. You're going to watch Will Putnam at right guard here matched up with Cody Roscoe and just gets beat with the arm over. You see all the movement up front to get one-on-one -on -one matchups like that for a dynamic rusher with all the attention bought the other way. Exactly how Syracuse draws it up for the first defensive possession. Will Spires, the veteran punter, to send it away. Pena. Brought down shy of the 40-yard line after a 37-yard punt. Second offensive series for Syracuse on the other side. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Ram Trucks, Motor Trend's Truck of the Year for the third year in a row, and in part by Allstate. Save money like a champion with Allstate. September 29th, 2018, Chase Bryce to the rescue. Clemson at home in its championship season. Down 10 in the fourth quarter to Syracuse. They had that 94-yard game-winning drive. Chase Bryce in for the injured Trevor Lawrence. Converts on fourth and six. And from that point on, Dabo Sweeney's team bulldozed their competition, including Alabama in the championship. Sean Tucker on first down, runs into a roadblock. Skalski was in there, as he usually is for Clemson, their leading tackler. Dabo Sweeney really telling us the bye week was needed. He said if his team had to play last week, You'd be looking up and down that roster sheet wondering who the guys were. They were that banged up. Yeah, between the attrition and trying to get guys healthy. And then we mentioned all the mistakes in execution. A chance to self-scout midway yep. through the season. Huge for this team. On second down, Schrader to the air looking for Queeley. Incomplete. Mario Goodrich in coverage. He didn't play last time out against BC. Part of the reinforcements. And it sets up third down. And that's an early message for all the receivers in this game. You saw physical at the top of that route. They're going to let them play tonight here, judging by what we've seen so far. Clemson's defensive backs coming up, playing tight on these Syracuse wide receivers. Now you've got to adjust. Now you've got to start to build some double moves in here to help these guys out. Remember, Syracuse's top wideout, Taj Harris, entered the transfer portal. They're looking for a go-to guy to emerge. Courtney Jackson's been that guy the last few weeks. Trey Williams applying the pressure. Schrader on the run, incomplete. Wanted to Sherrod Johnson. Would have been a first down if he caught it. Instead, it's three and out. For both offenses right now, the trouble's been on first and second down. You're seeing from Clemson what they've tried and true here. Double A gap blitz up front. So you got six up by the line of scrimmage, but then you back everyone out. They ended up rushing four on that play, Anish. But because the offensive line has to account for everyone, all six up there, you turn guys loose, not able to make a play. Williams to punt again. Fair catch called for and made by Brown at the 16-yard line. But a defensive battle early. Another crack for Clemson and Pizzico. Carrier Dome, it's the ACC on ESPN. Couple of teams that could play the what-if game. Clemson, 3-2, lost to Georgia, the number one team in the country on a pick six. Lost to NC State in overtime. Syracuse the last two weeks. Lost to Florida State and Wake on the last play of the game. Up the middle on first down, it's Kobe Pace. He's now the lead running back, Will Shipley, the freshman, the Weddington Warrior. 
out with an injury, although they feel he might be back maybe as soon as next week, way ahead of schedule. He said he's an unbelievable healer at this point, but in the meantime, Kobe Pace, Phil Maffa stepped up big in their game against Boston College. They've got now a stable, some depth built up at this position. Now, Maffa especially was supposed to be in the redshirt program, looked like a real player. Oweyongalale, pocket closing, throws it downfield, Ross dropped it! He was wide open and he dropped it! And he is down at the 46-yard line and slow to get up and now limping to the sideline. Justin Ross last year missed the season with that spinal cord and neck injury. And this is a great job by DJ navigating the pocket here. A little off balance for the throw. And then just landing wrong on that foot. That's a huge one to keep an eye on. Justin Ross, a preseason first team All-America. They're already thin at wide receiver. Here's the pressure. And it's caught by Bo Collins, who we underlays high school teammate. A gain of six. It'll move the chains. That's a big one to settle them down after that drop a niche. We've talked about it. Not all on DJ. There have been plenty of drops to go around. Plenty of miscommunication between him and this wide receiver core. Now Ross hurting on the sideline. Frank Ladson's been banged up all season. EJ Williams out. The tight end, Braden Galloway, out again. Pace barrels forward across the 35. Brought down by Garrett Williams, a pickup of seven. Now as they start to get moving here, and we see. We see the backup quarterback, Tyson Pumachon, coming in. Uwe Ungalale stays in. He split out wide. And if your defense, your antenna's up for a double throwback, something making use of both their arms on this play. Pumachon, 6'3", 225. Tore his Achilles in the spring, cleared for the season opener. He'll keep it. And tripped up from behind by Marlo Wax. The running game changed this year at quarterback with DJ. He's not as athletic as Trevor. He doesn't stress the edge. We see him go in there for QB power plays like we could see here on third and short. Tyson Pomichon coming in here is an admission by this Clemson offense. We've got to find ways to hold the backside with our quarterback as a runner. Two tight ends into the game. And Gata and Bo Collins split wide. Oyunglele looking to run and devoured in a sea of orange in the backfield. Curtis Harper the first to get there. Anish, this was the QB power that we expected. You run the scouting report, but you got to block the nose guard. Look at Curtis Harper, number 52, as they try and down block, goes completely unblocked through the middle of this defense here. And again, we talked about the reshuffled offensive line here. Mason Trotter in at center, Bockhorst and Putnam back into the lineup, but everyone from different vantage points turning the nose guard loose, a drive killer. Another punt for Spires. And Pena from the 15. Hurdles across the 20, still going. And finally taken down. Now they'll mark him down a little further back at the 26-yard line, a 51-yard punt. Now we get you set for the weekend, a big weekend. Cincinnati at home for UCF. The Bearcats, according to FPI, at least an 82% chance to win their remaining games, each of their remaining games. Oklahoma is going to be interesting. Spencer Rattler benched last week against Texas. Do you start Rattler? Do you start Caleb Williams? It's been radio silence out of Norman this week. I think we're going to see Caleb Williams on the field for that team, and he's, he gave that offense a different spark. I didn't think all of their problems were on him, meaning on Spencer Rattler, but there's no denying how they responded. Yeah, Purdue and now number two Iowa as well. Sean Tucker has an opening across midfield. Tucker down the sideline. And finally taken down inside the Clemson 25-yard line. He's the best running back they've had here since Walter Reyes in the early 2000s. He 
does such a good job, and he's varying his pace on these rushes here. He'll take his time and then explode the minute he sees the edge sealed. That time, number five, Chris El or Elmore, the tight end, all everything super back we talked about, getting him that edge. He played offensive line last year when Syracuse was so banged up up front. And a timeout by Dino Babers. The Syracuse head coach now in season six. Timeout. The first 30-second timeout. Anish, let's go back to that big run. We talked about Elmore, who played guard. You saw him over on the right side of this formation, lined up at tight, ten, a tight end. And watch the blocks he gets on number zero, Barrett Carter. Just ragdolling him, throwing him to the ground there. And that's all this guy needs. Zone plays, Anish, especially outside zone. If it's hitting backside, you're doing good as an offensive line blocking this thing up. If it's hitting to the play side, it's because you're getting dominant performances from your tight end there to seal that edge. Joe Morris has long held the running back rushing record for one season at Syracuse. Tucker's on pace to break that mark, which has stood for more than 40 years. You're going to see him show up as a pass protector, too, to be such a young player, in niche, and to be able to stay on the field for all three downs the way he does because he understands his rise at Syracuse, very similar to what we saw from Kyron Williams in that backfield for Notre Dame coming off deep in the depth chart. Here's Schrader. He'll throw down, field intercepted. Tyler Venables picks it off. And that was a poor decision by the Syracuse QB. Your first play down in the red zone after the big run, there's no reason to take that chance. That's the kind of decision making from this quarterback, who we know more comfortable on the ground than in the air, setting up under pressure. You just got to throw that one on the bounds, live to fight for second down. And that's coming out of a timeout, Anish. You've got all the time in the world to instruct your quarterback on what to do, rolling out to his right where you're going to have limited options. So Clemson back out there. A good sign for the Tigers. Justin Ross back in the game, lined up in the slot. He'll be at the top of your screen. Kobe Pace in the backfield. The give is to Pace. A career-high 125 yards against BC a couple of weeks ago. Seven more there, 25 for the ball game. Yeah, and he's the first four games of the season. Kobe Pace, 20 rushes for 93 yards. Almost matched it in carries and certainly overdone on the yards there. They can tote the rock up front, but we still have yet to see either team really take a design chance downfield outside of that Justin Ross drop. Now that was Ross in motion. That's Pace again. He'll try the outer edge. And he's close to the marker, tackled by Justin Barron. And it's enough to move the chains. First down. Seconds tick down in this opening quarter. Still scoreless. And quarter number one is in the books. We've got a Blutarski at the Carrier Dome. That might have been my GPA here as a senior. <laughs> zero, zero after 15 minutes. Second quarter begins. Clemson with the football, a first down and 10. No score. Tigers in the white, Syracuse in the orange. First carry of the game for Phil Maffa. He shined against Boston College last time out. Seven carries, 58 yards, first action of the season. They wanted to redshirt him, but Will Shipley's injury. And then the transfer of Lynn J. Dixon created an opportunity. As you see, Tony Elliott. 
Dabo Sweeney has been a staunch defender of his offensive coordinator who's weathered some criticism. He's been told this offense doesn't motion enough, doesn't do enough to help out its playmakers who have struggled to start this season. But he said, this guy didn't forget how to coach the way you've seen him in national championships in the past. Oh, Uyungle laid a run across the 30-yard line to the 31. It brings up third down. A penalty marker flies in late. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Defense, number 23. 15-yard penalties added to the end of the play. First down. It's on Justin Barron. Ultimately, Mike, if Clemson can get its offense right, what do you see the identity of that offense as? I think we've seen it's been built up in this backfield depth. Anish, last year, Clemson had 16 plays of over 40 yards. This year, they've got three. It's just a different outfit. What you've got here talent-wise, the injury at wide receiver here. And so I think we may have to see this offense become more comfortable matriculating downfield than used to the splash plays we've seen in the past. A three-man front for Syracuse now crowding the box. And another penalty. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. A year ago, early in the season, Dabo Sweeney was telling us, hey, we're seven deep at running back. Well, they've lost a lot of those players. Last year during the season, Demarcus Bowman transferred to Florida. In the offseason, you lose Ches Malusi to Wisconsin. Lynn J. Dixon now in the transfer portal. Will Shipley is hurt. That running back depth has been tested for Clemson. There's some confusion on the field whether there was a timeout called or not. And Dabo Sweeney pleading his case. Correction, there is no delay of game Anish, foul. This is Clemson is called timeout prior to the clock expiring. It'll be first and ten Clemson. Timeout Clemson. A timeout by Clemson. We'll step aside. Scoreless second quarter. intended target and that's on target that's a touchdown and there is a penalty marker at the 42 Offense, of Clemson. 64 10 yard penalty first down right tackle Walker Parks big part of that O-line rotation last year as well that was as a true freshman Anish, what Taylor mentioned there, you're going to go back and watch it anyway. Great to see similar schemes go back for that, but it has to be eye-opening for this group that you guys saw the stats, the way they lived behind the line of scrimmage, tackles for loss, great sack production, first in the ACC. You can see the growth year over year, and now all of a sudden you walk into that matchup saying, I can win my one-on-one -on -one battle. Yeah, number three, Mikkel Jones, one of the top linebackers in the ACC. We Uyunglele, pump fakes, he'll scramble, changing directions. And he cuts a jagged path for a gain of 11. And a first down for the Tigers. Stephon Thompson the stop. We mentioned the identity of this team potentially being running in short area passing. It's going to involve this offensive line that we talked about banged up, moving guys around on the interior, coming along and performing better than it has so far. The number one thing that can help that Anish is a quarterback that's able to run. It, it, it makes life so much easier because now that backside end and linebacker have to have eyes and respect him. On the ground is Maffa. And he's to midfield. Phil Maffa out of Loganville, Georgia. Same high school as Clemson standout Wayne Gallman. One of my favorite Clemson running backs. And now this third medium area is where it can get dicey for this Clemson team here. Maybe try and slip a screen past him here. And if you get in the fourth and short, be ready for your big quarterback to run it.
Pressure coming. A Joey Joe, the catch. And a first down for Clemson. Just the third catch of the season for the first Clemson signee out of Canada. Only his third year playing American football. Really hasn't played a whole lot. Parents from South Sudan. They like his upside. You see the big body, 6'3", 220. And that's why Tony White, the defensive coordinator for Cle Syracuse, said, be careful about calling for the demise here. There is still a roster loaded with talent that if you take your eyes off the prize, can burn you badly. First and 10 from the 42. Oyunglele moves the pocket. Blitz coming. They set up the screen. Davis Allen erased. And there is Mikel Jones, who's been an agent of chaos on the Syracuse defense. And you see some frustrated offensive linemen. You had it set up here. Selling the fake. Nobody moves. Almost like when you have a false start on the defense. And then everyone jailbreaks. And Jones there. You've got to have eyes. We would call that a hugger when you've got yeah. someone staying backside low by the line of scrimmage. That's got to be your first look as an offensive lineman heading out to the screen. If you don't go flat down the line of scrimmage, you get a play blown up for a loss like that. I see you as a hugger. Always been a hugger. Mafa. Makes the catch out of the backfield, finds a seam. And a nice run after the catch by Phil Maffa, close to the marker, and a penalty marker at the very end. I think that was number 31, Canton Arku. After the play, personal foul, defense, late hit out of bounds. 50 yard penalty added to the end of the play. Automatic first down. And that's a guy who is, they consider, they have four starting linebackers, and he's one of them, 31 here. But you see coming up at the end of the play, no reason for that. Already driving on your side of the field here. Brutal mental error. Now one mental error by Syracuse's quarterback near the red zone, and now by the defense with Clemson on the move. Third personal foul on Syracuse today. Oyunglele flips Maffa. High snap. Now the toss. Maffa. Chase down. There's Marlow Wax. This young linebacker core flies around. This Syracuse defense built the way Steven Babers wants. Veteran up front. Fourth and fifth year seniors all along their defensive line. And Mikel Jones sort of is the linchpin in the middle. But you're going to see Thompson, number seven, Marlo Wax, number two, flying around, making mistakes 100 miles an hour. Sage Ennis into the game at tight end. Ross in the slot. They give this to Maffa. And into the embrace of Canton Arku. Third down. Clemson, we've talked about all the success. Big national program. If you've been watching them and aren't ready for that sprint draw, you've Dabo, been missing it. Dabo Sweeney told us, this is where Clemson's got to be better. they got to finish drives against BC. Four field goals instead of touchdowns. Flag down. Somebody jumped early on that Clemson offensive line. False start. Offense number 65. Five yard penalty. Third down. Anish, it's been loud here in the dome early, and you see it affecting. Again, communication for that group up front. Reshuffled for Clemson. And you know this defense wants to get downhill and get after you. No worse feeling in the world. It's like falling off the edge of a cliff. Clemson needs to get to the Syracuse 7. 13th play of the drive. There's the pressure. Downfield for Ngata. Touchdown, Clemson. Joseph Ngata, the team leader in receiving yards, coming off a 100-yard game, and that's a sparkling play in the end zone. It's and that's that a right touchdown. Foot. That's a catch. You're hearing the crowd protest. 
But that right foot taps right in bounds before his backside hit. And you might hear another sound soon besides this review. No, no, no. No, no, no. The touchdown. The previous play is under further review. That's going to be an easy one for him. We bring in our rules expert, Matt Austin. Matt, this should be a pretty standard review, right? Yeah, Anish, I agree. And everything Mike said is, is exactly correct. He gets the one foot down in the blue, definitely hits the ground before his backside, has control of the ball. This should be a touchdown. White cleats, in addition to looking great, pop on a blue end zone. That's a further review of the ruling on the field confirmed. You got to wonder if that's a confidence booster, not just for this Clemson offense, but for the quarterback, DJ Uyunglele. That's a play downfield. That was third and long. And Gata makes the catch, a boost for the receiving core and for Syracuse defensively. Go back to the Wake Forest game last week. Wake had a third and what, 23, and were able to convert and score on the drive. Three personal fouls already for Syracuse as well. Something to keep an eye on. Letting that drive continue on down in the little red zone area. BT Potter on for the point after. And it's 7-0 Clemson. Finally, some points on the scoreboard. A highlight reel catch by Ngata. His first receiving touchdown of the season. yard a touchdown catch by Joseph Ngata has given Clemson the lead as we check out tonight's passing spotlight brought to you by Dash Pass. Taylor McGregor, that's a play Clemson has been focusing on this week. Yeah, DJ Uyunglele told me that he practiced during these two weeks to really get more air under the ball. He said, I was trying to make every play perfect and instead I just need to give my receivers a chance, which is exactly what he did on that touchdown pass. We talked about all the size and ability still in this Clemson wide receiver room, especially in college in these, give these guys a chance to go up. Best case, you get a touchdown like that. Worst case, you come back, make a play, and get a DPI. Pena from his own end zone. And it dropped at the 18. Flag down all the way up at the 36 yard line. Doing the return, holding, receiving team, number 17. Half the distance to the goal, first down, Syracuse. Another penalty on Syracuse, their fourth. Week six, Monday Night Football has Josh Allen and the AFC East leading Bills against everybody's favorite fantasy player, Derrick Henry and the Titans. How about the Bills? Our friend Kevin Connors. From down the road in Ithaca, where he went to school, he would give up his right arm just to lose a Super Bowl again. I tell you what, this buzzsaw of an offense might take that arm from him and everything else. They've been electric. Huge, I think, mental win for them coming off the Kansas City Chiefs this last weekend. And Syracuse now backed up. From the 10-yard line, Tucker in the backfield. 75 rush yards already. He gets the call on first down. And pinballs his way for a gain of three. What do you like the most about the way Sean Tucker runs? I think when you watch him, especially on outside zone, Anish, it's the way he understands how the blocking scheme is so supposed to work. You'll see him press the edge, press the edge, and then at that last minute, put his foot in the ground. And so now defenders have to make a choice. You'll see these guys trying to two gap, trying to get their arms extended. And when they lean, he makes his offensive line right every time. On second and seven, Schrader. And that is caught. Sherrod Johnson with the catch, a first down Syracuse. Schrader now 6 of 10, less than 30 yards passing though, and he's got the one interception which has been costly. We know the way this team's remade themselves offensively, that's all you really need right now, just an off-speed pitch to get back to your fastball this rushing attack. Cooper in motion. 
Tucker. And that Clemson defense holds up. Rook Ororo on the stop. He and Detroit Williams getting a lot of the snaps at D-tackle without Brian Bruzee, without Tyler Davis. They do expect Davis, though, back soon again, like Will Shipley, ahead of schedule. Be a huge boost. The monster's in the middle here. And you see, even with all that talent, they twist them. They stunt them and move them around here. This defense is so great at creating seams, not only on passing downs, but in the rush as well. Second and ten now. Empty set. A three-man rush. This is Courtney Jackson. He's done a little bit of that. Yards after catch. Picks up the first down. And of all the receivers, he's become the go-to guy without Taj Harris. He lost his helmet, so by rule, has to come out for one play. And Chris Elmore, Rhino, enters. Make the decision a little easier to go back to the ground after that one. But you're absolutely right about Jackson. He's got a little extra burst that you see here. And as this offense looks for guys kind of like Clemson who can make plays after the catch, after contact, he's number one on the list. Jackson, 11 catches the previous two games. Just five in his first four. Schrader looking for Cooper, who was wide open on the slant. And the throw too high and offline. And for Schrader, the struggle this year has come on throws of 15-plus yards. His completion percentage on those throws, just 20%. It's been difficult. And this play, you're just trying to work in the intermediate. The run pass option here, but a great job by Trenton Simpson, number 22, getting into that passing lane that they know is on the backside of a lot of these. Clemson showing pressure. And that's batted down, Justin Maskell. Now they've got monsters on that defensive front, even without Brazilian Davis, Maskell, Foster, Miles Murphy, Xavier Thomas, and K.J. Henry. That triumvirate, all former five stars. And they're so well coached. There's nothing you love more than turning on tape and seeing a unit that all does the same thing across the board, including when you can't get home, getting up and getting your hands up. You're not going to get to the quarterback every time. Be smart and read his eyes like he did there. Third down. Clemson rushes four. Schrader over the middle. That's caught by Johnson for a first down. He beats Sheridan Jones for a gain of 14. And now some tempo by Syracuse. Wanted Trevor Pena. Used to be the, substitution. the MO Defense. for Syracuse when Dino Babers first got here. It's field changed. Snap. It's Five defense and it's the out. ability to run the ball. What a missed opportunity there, though. You get up to the line quick under center. Everyone's thinking run, and then you get it out to the perimeter. We had the penalty there on the Clemson defense, moving it up now and making it second and five. Clemson had too many men on the field. That was the penalty. Syracuse, second to drive in Clemson territory. Here's Tucker. And bulldozes his way near the 40-yard line. Give him eight. Another first down. And Sean Tucker now north of 85 yards in this first half. An Anish, look where they hide. Chris Elmore, the fullback on some of these plays here. He's in front of the quarterback on this play and doesn't move laterally until the last second. So the defense has no idea which way the formation's leaning, which side this could possibly go. That quick motion makes James Skalski and these great linebackers way to beat. Elmore in motion again. The give is to Tucker right up the gut. He's got an opening. Tucker inside the 20 to the 10 and taking down inside the five. First and goal, Syracuse. And Sean Tucker has now run for 100 yards in five straight games, tying Curtis Brinkley's school record. And we talk about how much the quarterback helps this rushing attack on offense. The threat of Garrett Schrader, number 16, as a rusher here, holds two defenders on the backside there that are now late getting over to the party, makes for an easy cutback for already one of the best rushers in the country. Well, Tucker has come as advertised tonight. 
Schrader keeps it and walks in. That is a big boy answer. Ten plays, 91 yards on that drive by Syracuse. After one that could have had you reeling, and instead, what did we see? The best of Garrett Schrader as a passer and his legs on that zone read, getting them to pay dirt. Andre Schmidt can become Syracuse's all-time points leader if he makes this extra point. The former Groza Award winner. And he moves into the record books. And Syracuse answers the Clemson touchdown with a 91-yard drive. Schrader opening up holes for Tucker, and then he get down by the goal line. The quarterback keep open for business. Tied up at seven. Andre Schmidt, now Syracuse's all-time leading scorer, passing Nate Trout, who played on some of those Donovan McNabb teams. Schmidt, the PAT, after the touchdown run by Garrett Schrader, just the second rushing touchdown allowed by Clemson this year. They've got Kobe Pace back there on the kick return, and he takes it to the 25. And this season, along with their contributions to university's general scholarship funds, for every field goal and extra point made, Allstate will also be donating to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief efforts. Thank you, Allstate. Now, we mentioned the Clemson injuries. You also lost your return man in Will Taylor. So uh, we've seen Will Brown back on punts. Now Kobe Pace back on a kick return. And Pace will begin in the backfield with the one they call Big Cinco, DJ Uyunglele. The give is to Pace. And he's brought down by Baron Taylor. Heading onto the field right now, defensive line coach for Syracuse. Vince Williams' message to his D-line is you have to play smart. You really have to focus on communication. Golik, how important is that after their last offensive touchdown? Huge, especially when DJ established himself as a rusher, breaking contain there. They've got to all understand they've got a run threat at quarterback. you got to keep the net cast around him and then close it in. We under the light, flat-footed throw. He's got Ross for a first down. You wonder how much the injury last year took away from Justin Ross because remember him in the college football playoff as a freshman against Notre Dame, sorry, against Alabama. Unstoppable. Uh, truly unstoppable there. A guy we saw take that 74-yarder to the house the year they won. He's as electric as they come, and you still see some of it waiting to break out. Pace. Searching for room, broken tackle. And then finally driven back, but forward progress gives him three. Now so much is made, obviously, Trevor Lawrence, the number one overall pick, but uh, Travis Etienne did so much as a rusher and a receiver. Arguably the best running back the ACC has ever seen. Anish, he had 34 explosive plays on his own in 2020. Clemson came into this game with 31 as a team. Yeah. Well, Young Lele pumps. Roscoe couldn't wrap him up. Throw downfield and incomplete. Wanted to Kari Collins. Third down. You see a frustrated Cody Roscoe down there. They've been great. That's a different breed at quarterback in Big Cinco. Mitchell Mays into the game at right tackle for Clemson. That makeshift offensive line held up, but Davis Allen dropped it. And it's fourth down. Taylor mentioned the communication on that drive. Syracuse inches from a sack. They're bringing pressure, and maybe the ball comes out just a bit quicker and a bit flatter. Communication, how much of that impacted by noise? Noise, you mentioned a new right tackle having to go in on a pivotal third down there, an offensive line that's already shuffled. 
It's just one extra layer to everything you've got to get communicated down that group. Another punt by Spires, a fifth-year starter. This one takes a big bounce. Pena on the hop, fielding the grounder. We're going to get a flag, a face mask on Clemson. And that'll tack on 15 more for Syracuse. It looks like Keith McGuire, number 30. You can feel the noise starting to build in here, Anish. Offense, big drive. Defense, three and out. Potential special teams penalty here. Complimentary football from the Orange. Offsetting penalties. And McGuire. A little laugh on the sideline. by both teams on the play. Personal foul, face mask. Number 30, kicking team. Illegal block in the back. Number 10, receiving team. The foul's all set. Replay, fourth down. Adrian Cole called for the penalty on Syracuse. So McGuire gets off the hook because of that. 3.43 to go. First half. Feels like another freaky Friday at the Carrier Dome with Syracuse and Clemson in town. We'll step aside. So we sorted it out with the offsetting penalties. We will punt again. This time, Courtney Jackson will return the punt for Syracuse. Spires to kick it away again. Fair catch called for. It bounces. And that landed in the end zone, so Syracuse will have it at the 20-yard line. Clemson for this game coming off a bye week. They had extra time after the Boston College game back on the 2nd of October. Mike Golick, Jr., Syracuse short week, overtime game. They're a quarterback and they're running back. Both had a lot of carries in that game. Does this score surprise you? Absolutely. And the mistakes we've seen from Clemson drops difficulty there I expected some penalties some of that attrition to show up for Syracuse here but Clemson still looking a bit out of sorts on offense in a way they're gonna really have to rein in as we get close to the end of this first half with this thing all knotted up at seven 332 to go opening half tied at seven a Joseph and got a touchdown for Clemson a Garrett Schrader touchdown run for Syracuse and here is Sean Tucker we told you at the top of the broadcast now the Syracuse running back is the best offensive player in the game. Boy, has he been that 129 yards on the ground in this opening half. And we've seen both groups have to move bodies around up front. Chris Bleich out at left guard now, so Kalen Ellis back in the game. He's been dinged up a little bit to start this. But so far, that has not stopped this unit for the Orange up front. Especially Tucker, who has 920 yards on the season, the most by any Syracuse running back through the first seven games of the season. And he gets it again. A short pickup. It brings up third down. R.J. Mickens, whose dad, Ray, played for the Jets, makes the tackle. Now this game was billed as a battle of strengths. Syracuse, the top rushing offense in the ACC. Clemson was giving up a little more than two and a half yards per rush entering play. They've been dominant up front, even with all the injury. But so many things you've got to keep track of in that backfield for Syracuse, making life harder for this group. Schrader, a lot of contact with Goodrich. They wanted Queeley, and it's incomplete. We talked about this for Clemson's side. Syracuse is going to have to start doing more to help get these receivers open. Great pickup by Sean Tucker, but there's just been no room to breathe on here. They're running simple routes. These corners for Clemson aren't getting stressed at all. You've got to bunch them up a little bit. You've got to start crossing bodies out on the perimeter to try and give them a little extra room. James Williams will punt. Will Brown waits at the 35.
Brown able to make the catch after a short 35-yard punt. Let's check in with the studio. Matt Perry, what do you have? Hello, friends. Coming up at the Sling TV halftime before you guys kind of touched on it there a second ago. Same as it ever was for Clemson the first part of the season. They're struggling. Joey will break down what he sees. Plus, Georgia and Kentucky, big one of the SEC East. We'll have a report from Athens. You know it. You love it. You want it. Virtual locks are back. Can one of us finally get an undefeated week? You'll have to find out coming up on the Sling TV halftime report. See, that's a professional tease. Chills. Matt Berry, take a bow. Are we on delay on first down? Low throw to Davis Allen. And Clemson close to midfield, a gain of five. Got a great slate of games this weekend. And one that I'm looking forward to. If you like offense, Ole Miss, Tennessee, SEC Network, primetime Saturday. We've seen both those teams up close and personal. Hendon Hooker and Matt Corral playing as well as any two quarterbacks you'll see in college football. Back to Allen again. A first down for Clemson. Seven more. And you're in great shape. A minute 40. The clock stops. One timeout left for Clemson. Start to get a little pace. And maybe that shakes DJ Uyunglele out of this funk. Gets him thinking less about each throw. Parks in for Mays at right tackle. And now Syracuse trying to get its personnel in. Oyungle lay to the sideline. It's Allen again. Did he stay in bounds? He did. Now that's the one thing as an offense, when you sub, the defense has the time to get its personnel on. So Davis Allen has been a favorite target here on this drive for Oyungle lay. Five catches now in this first half. Especially Syracuse playing back off. This is full prevent defense for the Orange here. As they're going to take a look at that last play to see if Davis Allen got those feet. Ruling on the field is the catch. The previous play is under further review. Tough to see anything from this angle back behind. Now let's bring in our rules expert, Matt Austin. It's important to note that the ruling on the field was a catch. Matt, do you see anything to overturn that? I, I don't yet. It, it's difficult to see if he had his foot down inbounds or not. The official lost his shoe, but... Uh, that's not pertinent to this, obviously. It's funny, not far from Clemson in Greenville, South Carolina. That's actually where shoeless Joe Jackson got his nickname. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Now, stands is a translation for we didn't see enough to overturn it. So that's one where if that was ruled incomplete initially, it probably would have stood as well. I think the right call, though, based on what we saw there, it was almost simultaneous. They're making these decisions at full speed. Can totally understand. And now a chance for Clemson to keep this drive alive. Phil Maffa in it running back. Second down, eight to go. Four-man pressure. Maffa out of the backfield. Now, you like what you see in 26, don't you? He's going to be a factor for Clemson this season. The coaches were telling us there's a little bit of the wow factor and uh, they initially wanted a year of separation between he and Will Shipley. Mafa's forcing the issue. A credit to him being ready for the opportunity, getting his first action here in the last couple of weeks. Clock stopped, 114 to go, third and five. Oyunglele downfield, too high for Ngata. And coverage that time, Garrett Williams, along with Jihad Carter, and it's fourth down. And the Clemson offense looking to the sideline. This might be a spot where it makes sense to go for it. As you're looking to come out of by, all the things we talked about contextually for Clemson season. Put it on your quarterback and remind him the confidence you have in him. Now, there's a two-for-one opportunity if they convert. Clemson gets the ball to start the third quarter. Tigers 0 for 4 on fourth down this season. And the 
Play clock down to zero. A timeout is called. Timeout, Clemson, the third and final. 30 second timeout. Big slate of games this college football Saturday. Cincinnati, can this be the year? A group of five team crashes the playoff party. Florida going to Death Valley. Purdue and Iowa, that's the 330 ABC game. Iowa's defense has been a takeaway machine. Offensively, are you sold on Iowa? No, that is a team that struggles mightily offensively, but with the volume, that team takes the ball away on defense. As deadly as any group of the country right now. All eyes will be on who starts at quarterback for Oklahoma, home against TCU. Clemson called to the timeout, couldn't get Syracuse to jump off sides, and Spires will come into punt. They'll fake it, going downfield for Allen, who makes the catch! Dabo Sweeney, maybe he went up the road to Turning Stone. A gambler here in the final minute plus of the first half. A pump fake from the punter. As we see a player. Yeah, Garrett Williams went down hard. Got clipped by his own player there, it looked like, coming over there. Jihad Carter coming across trying to make that play. Anish, I'll tell you. I don't like the call. If you're going to go for it on fourth down, I'd prefer to keep your offense on the field. But we talked about it. You're trying to get something going this season, trying to maybe capture the element of surprise to manufacture a big play. This is a coach that's going deeper in the bag than Clemson's had to in a long time. Oh, we talked to Dabo Sweeney. There was a, a Ted Lasso type quality in him and he says I know what the noise is outside of the program and you've got everybody saying this is the demise of Clemson they have not adapted to the times uh, he was adamant with us and the media this week that Clemson staying the course is going to find a way and again when you look at the talent that they have amassed and given the chaos that we've seen not just in the coastal but throughout the ACC this year you still expect this team to be in the mix at the end of the season they signed the number one recruiting class last year. We've talked about how Clemson has built this dynasty over the years. And now you come into this season after all that success, and we've seen all these one-score games, four of five decided by a single score this season, and it's a different challenge for Dabo Swinney. They're used to having the college football playoff as the carrot at the end of all this. So going into the bye now, you coach this team a little bit differently based on those couple of losses. You have to do some different things to get the message across to a group of players top to bottom that has not experienced much losing in their careers. Now you think about it, this has been right up there with Alabama. You know, a bastion of success. A team that Dabo Sweeney has shepherded into the high renaissance of the program. Garrett Williams still on the bench for Syracuse. So you've got Adrian Cole now matched up against a Joe Joe at the top of your screen. Let's see if Clemson looks to challenge him. You've got him right next to Justin Ross. An easy chance to use all that attention paid to eight. Instead of toss to pace, the ball is on the ground. Incomplete pass. The ruling is an incomplete pass want Clemson to go deep here. You've got to try and continue to establish the confidence in this group. You've got an advantage with a backup in the game right there. Put yeah. it up there for a Joe and Joe and let him make a play on the ball with him pressed up by the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's the right call. Uyunglele to the air. Roscoe got a hand on him. And Uwe Ungalale gets rid of it. Roscoe's got one sack today. He's almost had a couple more. We saw Will Parks have to come out of the game before. Not sure what he's been dealing with there. Mason Schroeder starting at center today. That's because Rayburn's out. And Putnam back at right guard coming off an injury.
On third down, Ui Ungalale. To the air, he's got a Joe a Joe for a first down. They picked on Cole, who's in there for Garrett Williams. And that's the matchup. If you're going to keep getting it, you've got to go right back to. You've got a backup in there against a guy with all the physical gifts in the world. Again, 6'3", 220. We've seen big body Clemson wide receivers so adept at making plays near the sideline for years. Now, if you're Syracuse, can you roll your coverage to maybe help out Cole? You're going to have to start, back him off a little bit, try and get physical with them at the line of scrimmage. You've got to give him different looks here for a wide receiver group that struggled with consistency. Allen's been the go-to guy on this drive. He's in the slot up top. On the slant to Ross, who hauls it in. Brought down by the safety, Jason Simmons. Remember, no timeouts left for Clemson, so the clock's got to move. Get up here and spike it. They do. They've got time. Second down. Prior to the snap, timeout, Syracuse, their first, 30-second timeout. A timeout called by Dino Babers with 30 seconds to go. Now we briefly alluded to Coastal Chaos. Both of these teams play in the Atlantic as Chaos devolved, evolved into Atlantic Anarchy. It seems to be this season. I mean, look what we started with compared to where we've ended up now here. Clemson coming into this thing where everyone expected. Let's see where they are on the board all the way down at three. Wake Forest, 4-0 in conference play. One here in overtime on Saturday. NC State, BC this weekend. Now, boy, the Wolfpack, you know, one slip up on the road against Mississippi State. You and I did that game. If not for that, the conversation the around NC State and Clemson would be totally different right under now. Further review. You're right. That was a program-defining win for Dave Dorn and that bunch. Mississippi State's a weird knuckleball for everyone going up against them. They're going to review the last catch. So we were in a timeout for a long time, and now the play is being reviewed. And so there's a lot to keep track of on this because there was time milked off the clock. Yep. Catching that inbounds, no timeouts, no first downs. Now, does that ball come out? I think that's, that's the what question. looking at, the left hand coming in with that punch. Let's bring in our rules expert, Matt Austin, again. Again, you need conclusive, indisputable video evidence to overturn a call. Yeah, originally, I did Matt, not think he caught the ball that? seeing it live. Uh, I don't think so. I think this is a catch. Originally, I didn't think he caught it because his hand looked like it grabbed fit the ball late. But I, I don't think that was the case. I think the defender was reaching in there, and he was pulling away from him. Looked like he had the ball well off the ground. So I think it's a catch either way. Now, one thing to remember, the ball is allowed to hit the ground as long as you're in control of it. You cannot use the ground to secure the ball. In a lot of those instances, we'd see that wiggle or move around that would let you know he's lost control. But that time, the hand underneath secured against the body. This is going to remain a catch. Uh, these final 30 seconds, or if they end up adding time, whatever it turns into, but yeah, this turns into a crucial sequence. If Clemson can punch it in, now you get the ball to begin the third quarter. Big pendulum swing. That middle eight, That's so crucial. The ruler on the field stands. Second down. And when I say that, Anish, that middle eight minutes, the last four minutes of the first half, beginning of the second half, that opportunity to create points and give yourself an advantage in a game that's been so close the entire night. Clemson struggles with finishing all season long, settling for field goals against Boston College. This was an area of emphasis during the bye week here. Playmakers stepping up and making plays down in the low red. Second and goal from the four. Pace, the running back. Allen, the motion man. Oweyungalele to throw. Steps up. Chucks it to the end zone. It's batted down. We do have a flag down 
Simmons broke it up. And it's on Clemson. Hobie, offense, number 54. 10 yard penalty. Second down. That's Mason Trotter again, filling in today at center. Tony White, the defensive coordinator for Syracuse, is throwing everything at him. Watch him drop two defensive tackles out into coverage right here, bringing the linebacker. So now DJ's got to hold a little bit longer. Everyone up front adjusting because you have all those bodies up at the line of scrimmage, forcing you as an offensive line to protect inside out. It backs it up to the 17, 24 seconds to go. Uyunglele has time all day. End zone, Ross. Did he come down with it in the end zone? No signal that it's a touchdown. They'll mark him down at the one-yard line. The clock continuing to run. That stopped momentarily for the first down, and now Uyunglele will snap it. It was not goal to go, so it stopped momentarily. They spiked the ball first and goal, and now you've got a couple of chances to punch it in. 13 seconds to go. I'm almost surprised they didn't review that boy. Where did that ball go? Does that ball break the plane? Because he had to go back, reach back to get it. But you spiked the ball already, so now that play can't be reviewed. DJ is a power running back yep. here. Your quarterback with that extra blocker fully in play from the one. Two tight ends, no timeouts. The give to Pace, and he's in for six. A 13-play drive. Clemson, in the final two minutes, takes the lead again, 13-7. to seven. And two big confidence boosters in areas they've struggled coming into this game. Justin Ross, big play down the field in yeah. the passing game, and follow that up by putting it on your offensive line that struggled, that's beat up, to say, we got one yard. I don't care if we don't have any timeouts left. Get our back to the end zone. Potter's extra point attempt, good. Nine seconds to go. Clemson will get the ball to begin the third quarter. What did Clemson show you on that last offensive drive? The ability to overcome mistakes. We saw drops. We saw receivers stepping up, making tightly contested plays by the sideline. They took advantage of a backup being in the game in Adrian Cole after Garrett Williams went down on that play. And the and receivers today have made some catches. Davis Allen on the fake punt. Justin Ross to set up the pace touchdown and then the touchdown catch earlier by Ngata. You want to talk about climbing the ladder. Yep. And the drops have still been there. That's the next step is you've got to eliminate those negative plays because a lot of them have been easy point-blank drops by Ross, by Davis Allen, who both give them credit, mental fortitude to step up and each make big contested catches on that drive. Well, this may be a season where very little comes easy for Clemson like it has over the last decade. Syracuse will have it at the 25, nine seconds to go in this opening half. Do you try something here or you just go into the locker room and play it safe? I think they might bust one, try and see if they bust one run here. You got a great running back. Let Sean Tucker take it two hands on the ball. And if not, you head into halftime here. Just too much ground to make up with nine seconds left. Tucker, 11 carries, 130 yards in this first half against one of the better running defenses in college football. This matchup has been used to seeing a different running back in orange making plays. Travis Etienne out. Sean Tucker, welcome to the party. The give is to Tucker. And the clock ticks down. The first half comes to an end. 
A late touchdown run at the end of that second quarter by Kobe Pace has given Clemson a 14-7 lead. And this is a lead Tiger. They have won 53 straight when leading at the half. That's the story in central New York. Now to the studio. ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Ram Trucks. It's the ACC on ESPN. Four years ago, a Friday night at the Carrier Dome, Syracuse pulled the upset on Clemson. Tigers today unranked 3-2. and two. Another close game on a Friday in October between these two. 14-7, your score at the half. And Ishraf, Mike Ole Jr. will hear from Taylor McGregor in just a bit. Now, what jumps out at you from this first half? That this might be who Clemson is this season. Coming off of a bye in another close game. Four of their first five is one score. And what did it take to get there? Overcoming three big drops. Making some big plays down the field and a fake punt. All to be leading by one score at the half here. Clemson not just going to roll out of bed and beat anybody this season. And yeah, perhaps a new world order taking shape in the ACC. Clemson after that touchdown at the end of the first half. A chance to go two for one. They will receive to begin here in this third quarter. Pace. Out across the 20 to about the 25. First half stats brought to you by Zaxby's. Clemson offensively, it's been a struggle all season against FBS competition. 54 yards on the ground. Sean Tucker coming as advertised. Really a national showcase game for him. 132 yards for Syracuse rushing in that first half. Penalty yards and the timing of some of those penalties have played a big part in where we are in this game. Syracuse, four penalties in the first half after just 11 in their past three games. We Ungale on the RPO. Finds Ross, who debuts his way across the 35 as we check in with Taylor. Thanks, Anish. Talking to Gino Babers at halftime, he said the biggest adjustment we have to make is accounting for DJ Uyunglele's legs. He said we, he is running way more than we expected, and so that's really what they want to focus on on this drive. Now, as for Clemson offensively right here, Dabo Sweeney said we need to score right here. He said, yes, we got into the end zone, finished drives like we would like to, but we got to stop some of the miscues and penalties. A nice run on first down by Pace. Mikel Jones, the stop. I remember this Clemson offensive line. They're starting Mason Potter at center. Hunter Rayburn is out. Matt Bockhorst, too. Guard is his natural position. Moving back there again today. Putnam coming off an injury. Parks and Mays have both seen time at right tackle. And how about Pace flashing the power again? And another first down for Clemson. A little mojo offensively on this drive. Multiple plays under center here. You're setting up for a play action shot. They operate so much out of gun. You can do more with the ball fake when you turn your back to the defense. Coming back from under center. I'd imagine they're going to go back to that over the course of this drive. Let's see if they pick on Adrian Cole, who's starting at corner in the second half. Garrett Williams, Syracuse's top corner injured in that second quarter. High snap over the head of Uyunglele. Loose ball. He's able to dive on it. And that's a drive killer. It pins Clemson back inside its own 35. This is what's undoing Clemson. You're going to watch right here. That ball skies. That's on the center. That thing going up and hot here. And it's pinned. One step forward, two steps back for Clemson this entire game, having to overcome too many mistakes. Now again, that was Mason Trotter, and you can see his snapping hand. He's got a cast on it. A loss of 17. There's Davis Allen. Now he's been the centerpiece of the passing game in many ways. Seven catches, a career high for the tight end. It's a position you haven't always talked about in the Clemson offense is really until last year. Getting so much production from these big dynamic wide receivers. A Jordan Leggett was a pretty good one. Fair point. Fair point.
switching up, getting Justin Roch the matchup on Adrian Cole, number 10 on the outside. Going to want to go back to the guy who made the big play to end the first half. Headed downfield, Ross tried to make the contested catch, no flag, and Adrian Cole, a little celebration at the end of that play, and that was a 50-50 ball, that was Clemson saying, we're Pete, we're picking on your weakness. They went right at it, they saw, they switched those ride receivers once they saw how Syracuse lined up on defense to go back at him, but the referees have been letting them play physical yeah. at the top of these routes all night on both sides, that's a great job by Adrian Cole coming back over, making a play not getting there too soon spires on a fake punt made the biggest play in this game sends this one away to trevor pena from the 10 and shakes his way across the 15 after a 45 yard punt first offensive series of the second half for syracuse after this Sean Tucker, less than 70 yards away, or I should say 77 yards away from 1,000. He gets the call on first down, and he gets swallowed up in the backfield. It's that Clemson defensive front, Xavier Thomas, who's had an all-conference type season, got there first. This is going to be the chess match adjustment in the second half. Yep. Crashing down there, and what you saw, Nolan Turner, the safety, down in the box on the edge, clouding that read for Garrett Schrader. They're going to have to go over the top of them on a couple of pass plays here because they have decided we're going to cloud that read for them on the backside of the zone. Yeah, Syracuse with Schrader at quarterback. That is not their game offensively. Schrader to the air, and a wonky throw in the direction of Alford. It's third down, and now if you're Clemson, uh, do you light up the pocket? You bust out the galaxy brain blitz right here if you're Brent <laughs> Venables and get after him. This man is a magician at showing you one thing, disguising it, and then bringing it from the other direction, getting some fresh pass rushers on the field. Etiosa Rubin, number 32 in there. And we know Brent Venables likes to hold, get that sign in there late, see what the offense is giving him, put them in the best position. Third and 12. Schrader under pressure. Ruben in pursuit. Now it's Thomas, and he's got to throw it away toward the Clemson sideline. And it looks like we're going to get a late hit against the Tigers. First of the foul, dropping the passes, defense, number 12, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Tyler Venables, Dad Brent, the defensive coordinator, and Clemson gifting Syracuse a first down. Ooh, and that one was close. He looked like he's yeah, in that bounds was close. here on the Boy, that's, oh, that, that's a terrible call. I agree I'm sorry. with you. Uh, uh, well in bounds there. I understand he got rid of the ball in that spot maybe a bit late, so you don't want to let him flirt with it, but yeah, that was a bad call that went against Clemson. <laughs> Schrader looking for Courtney Jackson. Is that a live ball? No, incomplete. That one was close, thrown behind him on there, going laterally down the line of the scrimmage. Syracuse lucky the ref blew the whistle on that one. Abdul Adams. Uh, it's Tucker in the game, rather, but he's lined up in the slot. They brought in Devon Cooper, number 25. wonder if you give Garrett Schrader a chance on a draw here. Calm him oh. down. Some of these errant passes. Schrader just 8 of 17. There it is. You called it. And it sets up third down now for Syracuse, six to go. 
Just so much more manageable here, though, for this team. He's quarterback, thrives his run first, still wants to be a downfield passer. But we see this, guys, I always said that about Cam Newton. He got better as a passer when you let him be involved in the running game. And so far, we haven't seen a ton of carries. Timely, but not a lot of volume for Garrett Schrader, the runner. Cooper in motion. There's the blitz. Schrader chased by Skalski. Throws on the run. Caught by Alford. And he's got a first down for Syracuse. The 6'5 freshman from Montreal. Coach is telling us he's got a high ceiling. And certainly he looks the part. And now they're trying to get back and use some tempo again here. But watch on this play. Skalski just turns Scott free. This is just a great extra effort play by Garrett Schrader, who now once you took the thinking out of it, he's running for his life. A lot easier to cut the ball loose. Both of these quarterbacks at time trying to place the ball a little bit too much. This is Schrader's fourth consecutive start. Tommy DeVito opened the season as the starter. Play action. Schrader took a big hit. And he lost a yard, second and 11. Ororo and Skolski in there. Got to give Schrader credit. That's a big, tough kid because James Skolski coming downhill at you. That defensive line, that's a shredder of a unit. But I love Syracuse starting to build in, showing them we're going to go downfield. You max protect, you keep a lot of guys in there. Just great coverage by the secondary. Second and 11, four-man rush. Toward the sideline, Sherrod Johnson. And it sets up third and seven. One of the things we haven't seen a ton of yet, they tried to set it up on the last third down. Sean Tucker is a receiver. Very capable out of the backfield. Career highs for him this year. In this opportunity, we know so much attention paid to him in the rush game. You've spread it out wide enough to where maybe you can get him matched up on a linebacker in the middle of the field. Tucker had the game-winning touchdown catch against Wake Forest. Clemson showing blitz. Instead, they'll rush three. And that's a low throw in the direction of Jackson. And it's fourth down. That's another one, just really struggling with his confidence on some of these short area throws. Anish, this offense is going to have to do a lot better on first and second down because third and six plus outside of Superman plays, just not seeing the confidence there from Schrader at this point. They only ran once with Tucker on that drive as James Williams will punt it away. Will Brown waits at the 15. Brown makes the catch, backtracks, took a big hit, almost did a headstand after a 36-yard kick. When we come back, Taylor McGregor will talk to a special guest. The number 44 holds a special place. Here at Syracuse University, worn by Jim Brown, Ernie Davis, and then Floyd Little continued that tradition. Little, a three-time All-American in the College Football and Pro Football Hall of Fame. He wore that number 44. He passed away on New Year's Day. He was honored at halftime. His legacy, and Taylor McGregor right now down with Deborah Little. Thanks so much, Anish. You mentioned legacy over and over again during halftime. How do you hope Floyd's legacy is carried on here at Syracuse? I hope that these students at Syracuse University will remember Floyd as one of the greatest number 44s here at Syracuse University. I hope that they will do assignments on the great legacy that he left behind, on the life of the man, on the character, on the great work that he did, and practically everything he touched, he was just great at it and succeeded at it. And I hope that that's how they carry on his legacy, by talking about him and keeping his memory alive. What did the number 44 mean to Floyd? 
Floyd made no secret of the fact that he came to Syracuse University because of Ernie Davis. Jim Brown, number 44. Ernie Davis, number 44. And he gave Ernie his word that he would come to Syracuse University. And so to wear the number that Jim Brown and Ernie Davis wore made him one of the proudest football players here at Syracuse. And every time he had the ball, he was thinking about making them proud and carrying on that legacy. So number 44 was everything here at Syracuse, and it was everything to Floyd. How do you hope the number 44 legacy is carried on today? Well, you know, the number 44 is retired here at Syracuse and at the Denver Broncos, and I hope that Syracuse University will keep that number in retirement until they find a player who demonstrates the character, the morals, the ethics, and the outstanding athletic ability that Jim Brown, Ernie Davis, and Floyd Little demonstrated, as well as dynamic academics. Appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Anish? Uh, thank you, Taylor. Uh, you can feel the infectious energy and the love and the voice of Deborah Little. There's a lot of chatter as we have a flag down. Should Sean Tucker wear the number 44? It's not going to happen this year. Offside, defense, number 93, lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, second down. If Tucker continues on this path, it's certainly worth a discussion at the very least in the offseason. And uh, Floyd Little's memory in these parts, it, it's special. You heard his wife talk about following in the footsteps of Jim Brown and Ernie Davis, who was the first African-American to win the Heisman. Dino Babers told us when he took the job, Floyd Little was the first person that spoke to his team. He showed us on our call with him the picture of Floyd Little that he has on his desk in his office. And he talked about the character of that man as we see the sack on the play by Justin Maskell. Beg your pardon. Stephon Thompson on the play here. So much orange on the field, but just to put a cap on that, Anish, that character permeates through this program. That number mattered to Floyd. It matters to a lot of people here. Great to hear that from Deborah. Now the zip code of Syracuse University, 13244. Every university phone number starts with 44, then 3. It's third down. Oh, under the lay to throw. He's got time. Wants Ross. Skipped it. And Clemson will punt. Anish, we heard everything mentioned about what you look for in a player who is going to wear that number. Sean Tucker's going to draw serious consideration from what we've seen on the field, from his performance, the way this team talks about him. There's going to be a long, hard look at that. I played at a school with a lot of tradition. Having something like that, a mantle that means so much to the players involved who look to the heroes in the program, that can do a lot to jumpstart and jolt the locker room. Nobody has worn that number since 1998. Rob Conrad, the last to do it. This punt by Spires is a short one. It takes a Syracuse bounce. And the orange will start at their own 41-yard line, just a 23-yard punt. They missed that 44. Floyd Little here. Sean Tucker's been great. Floyd Little, a three-time All-American, five-time Pro Bowler with the Denver Broncos. And remembered today at the Carrier Dome. Syracuse taking over at its own 42-yard line. Garrett Schrader off play action. Throws it back the other way. There's Sean Tucker. First catch of the game. And the nation's leader in all-purpose yards. Brings it into Clemson territory. A pickup of 16. You're going to have to get creative with Garrett Schrader in the passing game. Heading into this one on plays, on passes, further than five yards downfield. Schrader, three of nine for 29 yards and a pick. It's not going to happen in the normal rhythm of your passing attack. So if you're Clemson, why not just force them to make the throw downfield? On the ground here to Tucker, and essentially Clemson is daring Syracuse to do just that. 
You're seeing them, whether it's Skalski scraping, going over on the backside to make the quarterback hand that ball off, putting Nolan Turner, number 24, down near the line of scrimmage. I'm 100% with you. And yeah. you put seven, eight guys down in the box, dare them to throw over top of you, and give yourself hats towards the best player on their team. Uh, the pass game has been almost non-existent, as you alluded to. Schrader, 11 of 21, only 77 yards, and threw an interception in the red zone. Schrader moving the pocket, chased by Maskell. Hit as he throws it incomplete, wanted Amari Hatcher. And there you go again. We told you but earlier in the game, on throws 15 yards plus downfield, he's only completing 20%. Now across the 50, you got to treat this like four down territory, which means screen or draw is in play here. We saw a ball go to Schrader once. They love to slide the line, get their running back to kind of bluff past an end and give him the ball. But you've got to do something here to try and just eat up yards. And I think you're going for it on fourth down here. Two downs to get you 12 yards. Play clock at two. Schrader's got time. Now the happy feet on the run. And finally tripped up by Venables, Tyler Venables from behind. And it's fourth down. You, you don't go for it now, and they will no. bring on the punter. Much too far back. You pin him back now. Your defense has played well to start this second half, but. And give credit, this Clemson defense only rushing three and four on a lot of these third and long plays. But active rushers, Xavier Thomas and company, able to get just enough pressure. Get Garrett Schrader off his mark. Three straight Syracuse drives now, ending in a punt. Over the head of Will Brown. And it's downed by Syracuse at the two-yard line. Oh, that's punter you for you. Whatever publication does one of those position lists next, put some respect on Syracuse's name. <laughs> the punt room here for the brand somewhere. Pat McAfee standing and applauding. Jorts on in his apartment. <laughs> Tomorrow on the ACC Network. That's a tough image to shake. You've got to give me a moment. <laughs> Taunting. Manny Diaz in Miami will take on Sam Howell and North Carolina. A couple of top 15 preseason teams looking to find their footing. And then NC State, second ACC game of the year. They go to the Heights to take on BC. Clemson pinned deep. Kobe Pace making his way through the wreckage. And he gets to the five-yard line. Syracuse defense going to be loaded up to stop this rushing attack right now. This could be a good chance to get a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside. Try and get Joseph Ngata matched up out in the perimeter with number 10, Adrian Cole, the backup in there for your best corner. Garrett Williams left the game in the first half. Oyunglele throws that way, low throw, incomplete, it bounced. Again, in the direction of Ngata, but also the direction of Cole. They clearly put a target on him. We saw them go with Justin Ross. And now this crowd make its presence felt. We on the way. We'll run. And is tackled across the 15-yard line, and he's got enough for a first down. There's the quarterback run game we see from Clemson. Dino Babers told Taylor McGregor coming out of halftime it was one of the biggest adjustments they have to make. What a backbreaker there for Syracuse on defense. I thought that was what they really found against BC. 12 rushing attempts, only 50 yards, but that threat, being able to get an extra hat for your blockers up front, huge. Under center now, Kobe Pace. Not much. 
Trevor Lawrence, Deshaun Watson, those were two quarterbacks who could get outside the pocket, run, make plays. Oui, Ungulale, a little more like Taj Boyd, who really started that trend. Remember how much quarterback power Clemson ran with Boyd. I mean, think about the play, one of the first ones where DJ announced his presence last year, that quarterback power against Miami, trucking defenders in the secondary. And we get a penalty on your favorite down, second and nine. False start. Offense number 64, five yard penalty, second down. A shame we've got to move off it. But Anish, we talked about what did we learn about Clemson in the first half, the identity? They've had to constantly overcome mistakes. It was a snap on their first drive, coming out, air mailing over DJ's head. Delay of game penalties this game. These are the kind of things, pre-snap penalties coming off a bye, going to infuriate a coaching staff. Now the student section letting the Clemson offense have it. The Ungalalei backpedals. He's got pace, who's tripped up. And close to the original line of scrimmage, it brings up third down. Justin Barron with the trip. That's a great job by Barron sniffing that out because you had the right call. Syracuse tearing up field, guys twisting up front, no recognition from the D-line. And they get to pin their ears back again now. Let's see Tony White, the D coordinator for Syracuse, get creative here. Give this mishmash Syracuse Clemson offensive line something to look at. Oyangalale's throw incomplete. Wanted and got of the coverage by Deuce Chestnut, and you hear the chants of Deuce. This was a defensive backfield that had two third-round picks last year. Ify Melfonwu and Andre Sisco. Garrett Williams was their understudy, really learned from them, and now Williams has been the teacher for Chestnut. They go get Mexican food. They go into the film room late at night. It's become a trend for those two. And they room together on the road. And I think all those opportunities for exposure to Garrett Williams, who is a pro with his process, you want him to learn all of those work habits from one of the veterans in your secondary. Spires punt. Fielded by Pena near midfield. Tackled immediately. 38-yard punt. No return. Player spotlight is brought to you by Tide. And we shine the spotlight uh, number 34 for Syracuse. I mean, what else can you say? Averaging 9.1 yards a carry during this game. We saw him finally getting involved as a receiver on the last drive. And based on what we've seen from Garrett Schrader, limited ability to push the ball downfield, they're going to have to get even more creative with him in the screen game, in the short passing game, match up with these linebackers for Clemson. Now, he's been in the red for rushing yards in the second half. Only a couple of carries. Tucker. And he's tripped up after a short gain. Trenton Simpson. Or rather, Jalen Phillips on the stop, the safety. Third quarter comes to an end at the Carrier Dome. Four years ago, on a Friday night, these two played a thriller in this very building. They played a thriller in Death Valley in 2018. It's going to be a 60-minute game again. Syracuse and Clemson, a one-score game through three. A one-score game as we enter quarter number four. And he Shroff, Mike Golick Jr., Taylor McGregor with you. Second down and ten, Syracuse. Good field position. Schrader is hit, and it's dropped by Alford. So third down coming up. If you're just joining us, Clemson got on the board first, a touchdown catch and a Sports Center top 10 worthy one from Ngata. Syracuse answered after a long run by Sean Tucker. Garrett Schrader punched it in. And then Clemson scored on a Kobe Pace run in the waning moments of the first half. Neither team scored in the third quarter. It's been tough sledding in this third quarter. Hughes backed up again right now. We've seen Clemson content to just rush three or four and get after the quarterback, although this time, a lot of bodies. 
Here comes the pressure. Schrader's throw for Alford. Juggled. Incomplete. Sheridan Jones in coverage. And right now, if it's not a bubble screen or something to a back, Syracuse really has nothing downfield in the passing game. They've had nothing really offensively so far. Sean Tucker in the first half, 12 carries for 132 yards. In the third quarter, three for minus four. And Anish, 14 of those 15 carries have come on first down. This offense has become too predictable, too stagnant right now. You've got to start mixing up the play calls because you don't need to give Brent Venables any more advantage than he already has being as great as he is. Good punt here by Williams. Brown muffs it. And able to cover it up for Clemson. Near disaster for the Tigers there. From plan to play, brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Syracuse's defense has kept the orange in this game. Great plays from the secondary and doing it shorthanded in the second half. We know this team lives behind the line of scrimmage, leading the ACC in sacks per game. But Anish, I've been so impressed with this secondary in the second half. Garrett Williams taken out of the game on the punt fake that Clemson ran for a big first down, a double banger for Syracuse on D. They've stepped up big. From the 10. Trying to run to the right, no angle, no room. Phil Maffa on the carry at second down. We talked about trying to have that influence on Darian Chestnut from Garrett Williams, holding the edge on a play like that. It's not sexy, it's not coverage, but it's necessary. He was able to extend that play, use the sideline as his friend. That's an incredible job by a freshman. Oyunglele, quarterback keeper, designed run. And able to drag a couple of bodies to the 21. It sets up third and much more manageable. And I'd go right back to the well on that, especially if Syracuse is only going to have four guys in the box. You saw a puller. You saw a running back up on the second level. Tons of bodies in front of a quarterback who barely needs a lead. Two tight ends in the game. Allen and Ennis. Out of the pistol. And Stefan Thompson to stop. Maffa didn't get much. It'll bring up fourth down. Or excuse me, it'll bring up uh, third down. Yeah, it was fourth down. Yep. This should yep. be fourth it down. Should be fourth up. down. They just haven't changed the the down and distance marker. They're going to take a look at this and measure. It looked to be short initially. Yeah, that's going to be short. I gotta tell you what, short yardage tonight, number 52 Curtis Harper in at nose for Syracuse has been money. That guy creating penetration upfield, forcing runs to cut back, is helping the rest of this defense. Look at number 52 right in the middle. Knifing up the field here. You're gonna watch a defender fold in right behind him, make a play. That kind of penetration in short yardage, an absolute gut punch. Syracuse with another chance to get good starting field position. High kick by Spires. Fair catch signaled for and made by Pena. A 48-yard punt. Still a one-score game early in the fourth. College football primetime on ESPN presented by Ram Trucks. A Friday night doubleheader just getting started here at the Carrier Dome. Cal, Oregon. That game follows us. Beth Moens, Kirk Morrison, Don Davenport will have the call over from Watson. Syracuse second half, the offense non-existent. And a penalty. We get a whistle.
Ball start. Offense, number 60. Five-yard penalty, first down. Left tackle, Matthew Bergeron. We've seen a lot of Kalen Ellis in this game at left guard. Chris Bleich, who got hurt early in this game. He was trying to come back from an injury. Clock operator, please. We set the game. Unable to go. Ellis is a freshman against a bunch of guys who are going to be playing on Sundays. You've seen that Clemson rush defense, the one that had only given up one rushing touchdown all season, show up in that third quarter. Negative rushing yards for Sean Tucker, one of the best backs in the country so far through this second half. Empty set. The fake to Tucker. Schrader will keep it. And we haven't seen much of that. The quarterback run game. Schrader today, seven carries, six yards after going over 100 of the last two games. We mentioned for Sean Tucker, 14 of his 15 rushing attempts had been on first downs. And when you're starting up backed up like this, it, it's got to be something. You've got an aggressive defense. You've got to take advantage. Something for the wide receivers on the outside because it just has not worked up the middle on early downs and distances. Clemson has figured it out. They've accounted for that. You've seen these linebackers canceling gaps on the backside, flowing that way. So your quarterback's handing the ball off to the rest of this hornet's nest. And for all the problems on offense, this Clemson defense still championship caliber. Schrader's throw. We get a flag. It was intended for Sherrod Johnson. Pass to the series. Offense, number 10. 15 yard penalty. Second down. Now that's actually Johnson, 19. And again, you keep backing up Syracuse, you force them into passing downs. They got a lot of ground to make up, and uh, that just has not been in the quiver tonight. Correction. Clemson will decline the penalty. Third down. Decline the penalty. They'll go to third down here. It, it, it's been really brutal. These Clemson defensive backs have played up close all night. Something to keep an eye on here, too, Anish. We saw early in this drive that false start penalty. When Clemson's D-line's moving, they're getting up and rapid-firing their hands here. It's almost like a simulated movement to try and get these guys to jump. You wonder if anyone's going to pick up on that as we see Tucker in motion. Now there it is again. Schrader over the middle of the field. Incomplete for Jackson. How many times have we seen a ball hit the hands of a Syracuse receiver today and it ends up as an incompletion? It goes both ways. That ball is on Garrett Schrader. That ball behind him going downfield at high speeds. But we've seen plenty of drops right in the breadbasket. It's been a similar problem for both teams. Syracuse coming off a game in which it ran for 354 yards. Just 135 today, most of that in the first half. And Williams will punt it away to Brown. Brown retreating. Breaks a tackle. And subdued at the 30. Clemson's turn on offense. 11.53 to go in regulation. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Ram Trucks, Motor Trend's Truck of the Year for the third year in a row, and in part by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. The veil of Onondaga meets the eastern sky above the new look carrier dome. New roof, new finish, some upgrades. They've seen drama too. Dino Babers, last three games for him, decided on the last play. Dabo Sweeney, four of Clemson's five games decided by one score. Oh, they sold the play action. They've got Davis Allen in the open field. A flag down at the end. Allen's helmet came off. He's to midfield. Looks it's like coming back. Going to get Justin Ross on that. Holy offense, number eight. Ten-yard penalty. First down. Had exactly what you wanted. Sneak Davis out of the backfield. And then you're going to watch eight here grabbing and holding in space. 
Love the effort. Justin Ross has thrown some critical blocks in the short area passing game, but perfect call against the blitz you had from Clems or from Syracuse, too. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. So it's first and seven. Oyunglele pumps twice. Downfield, he's got Collins. Those two played high school football together for a couple of years at St. John Bosco out in California. Great pump fake by DJ, and now getting a little tempo here, starting to go back downfield. That was Clemson's biggest play of the game, 36 yards. First play over 20 yards tonight for Clemson. On the ground. And a strong run through the contact. Kobe Pace. There's an injured Syracuse player down. It looks like Jihad Carter will step aside. Tonight's game flow brought to you by Progressive. We talked about some of the issues for Clemson coming in tonight. Was it scheme? Was it execution? Well, talent winning out for this team on the field. Big time contested catches. Davis Allen, Joseph Ngata, and Justin Ross all skying to make plays. These are just my better is better than your better balls on well-covered plays. Kobe Pace. Tunnels across the 25, and all three of those catches you saw either resulted in a score or led to a score. They were huge, and that fake punt, again, had the double whammy of not only a critical first down and a scoring drive, but Garrett Williams has not re-entered the game. Clemson's best cover, or excuse me, Syracuse's best cover corner. Syracuse backs off the line. Ui Ungalale throwing downfield and way too far intended for Ngata. You get the sense if Clemson can walk away with points on this drive, given what we've seen from Clemson's defense and Syracuse's offense. If this is a two-score game in the fourth quarter, boy, that tilts the advantage in Clemson's favor by a huge margin. It does. If you're Syracuse, you've got to come after and bring pressure right now. You've got to send five or more. You need to try and back them off and make this a tougher field goal. On third and six, Oyunglele looking to run. He's going to be short. It's fourth down. And the kicking team will come on for Clemson. BT Potter Four field goals made last time out against Boston College. Anish, after seeing him go downfield on some of this drive, underwhelmed by the third down play call there. This seems like a team starting to lean into the fact that it's not going bombs away like it normally has, playing too conservative. A 40-yarder. The kick is up. And good. Potter now six for six inside 50 this season. And Clemson makes it a two-score game. And now if you're Syracuse, Mike Golick Jr., I know Garrett Schrader is your quarterback, and he's given this team a spark. But with where we are in this game, Tommy DeVito is the better passer. He has plenty of experience, 17 starts. I think you've got to give him a look. I think especially from what we've seen, Garrett Schrader has not even displayed confidence in the passing game, especially in this second half here. You're going to have to be in obvious passing situations from here on out, and I think he'd give you a better chance. This week on Sunday NFL Countdown, Randy Moss ranks the week's best catches, and you got Moss. We gave him a few today, didn't we? Have at it, Randy. We got plenty to choose from. It's a potpourri of you got Moss. Hey, plus the latest on the Cardinals. They're undefeated, but will be without Cliff Kingsbury as they take on the Browns. Kyler Murray playing like an MVP candidate. No Nick Chubb for the Browns nope. either heading into this game. Everyone walking in shorthanded for a matchup of two of the best teams. 
Syracuse will bring it out to the 25-yard line. 9.22 to go in regulation. All right, we brought it up at the start of the broadcast. A lot of doomsday alarmists with Clemson, especially on the offensive side. We thought we would see better coming off a bye. Is this just who they are in 2021? It is for right now. We've seen them have to overcome still too many mistakes. The beautiful part, though, is, Anish, while you're winning by these close margins, you've got a championship defense that's going to be able to buoy your offense through it in the meantime. Schrader on the slant to Courtney Jackson, and he is devoured immediately after a gain of five yards by Nolan Turner, the All-American safety. We've talked about it since the beginning of this game, Anish. I think you've got to give them a double move at some point here. Everyone crashing down for Clemson, and there's got to be more urgency for Syracuse on offense to try and put them in a compromised position. Top of your screen, press coverage. Sean Tucker. And he finally gets out of the red here in the second half after 130-plus in the first half and he picks up a first down for the orange we mentioned leaning too much on first down run it's amazing what a difference it makes when all of a sudden the defense isn't loaded up expecting the same thing adino babers has been criticized a little for his clock management i know there's eight plus minutes left do you pick up the tempo a little bit I thought we'd see more of the hurry up that we've seen at times from the Syracuse offense in the first half. Back to Tucker. Broke the first two tackles. And ends up picking up a yard and a half. Balen Spector with the stop. Especially in East because you've displayed no desire to go further down the field. It's been five yards and in. Which is asking a lot to do that consistently against this defense. Because in addition to the talent on this side, the biggest difference, discipline. Clemson has not allowed a fourth quarter touchdown on defense this season. They are closers. So coffee for Clemson. Schrader on the want. run. Throws off balance, nearly intercepted by Goodrich. Well, you can argue the biggest play in this game was a pass by Schrader that he should not have thrown earlier that resulted in a Clemson interception and thwarted a Syracuse scoring drive. How many times have we seen the boomer bust Syracuse passing offense that is Garrett Schroeder, Schrader rolling out to the right, rolling away from pressure, and throwing a YOLO ball up there? Some of them have been caught for big gains, and then the others have been disaster or near disaster like, like we saw like there. That. Let's use that YOLO ball. Schrader won for his last seven. Third and eight. Delayed pressure, Schrader downfield for Pena, makes the catch in traffic, he gets away, touchdown Syracuse! Sometimes you only live once. That's the motto, Anish, YOLO indeed. The demise of Garrett Schrader premature. The leap in the end zone, this one's in across the plane. But on the other side, your quarterback takes an absolute shot. On a dual on the pressure. field, the touchdown, the previous play is under further review. I think this is going to be an easy one for them to confirm. My oh my, Cardiac Clemson in another one. Schrader got punished after releasing that ball. And for Trevor Pena, that was just his second catch of the season. After further review, the rule on the field is confirmed. That was an easy decision. So Dino Babers going to the YOLO play twice. It worked the second time. 
And it worked because his quarterback <laughs> delivered an absolute strike. Now listen, these two teams have showed us you put them together, they're going to play a close game. Everything has been tough this season for Clemson. Syracuse the last two weeks. Lost on the last play. Beat Liberty on the last play. Schmidt hits the PAT, and here we are. A three-point game. 7-18 to go in the fourth quarter. Eric Carter with the hit, but Garrett Schrader standing in the pocket and delivers down the field. Trevor Pena heading to the end zone. And you knew it had to happen on Friday night. 14-17, Clemson. Garrett Schrader to Trevor Pena, 62 yards. And it's a three-point game with 7.18 to go. Syracuse to kick off to Clemson. And we check in with Matt Berry. Guys, got a quick studio update for you. The Pac-12 game on our ESPN Friday Night Doubleheader. Cal and Oregon's going to start over on ESPN News. And then we'll bring it over here to ESPN at the conclusion of Clemson Syracuse. Guys, I got to thank you for this finish. A second ago, Galloway was dozing off. He is all in now. Coffee's for closers, Joey. <laughs> Cal, by the way, looking for its first top 10 road win in 52 years. Let's see if Clemson's got a counter. Oyunglele has his running back, Mapo, who's done a nice job out of the backfield as a receiver as we take a look at that last Syracuse TD. Yeah, you're going to watch Clemson gamble on defense. They send Barrett Carter, the outside linebacker, on a blitz, and they rotate Nolan Turner over as the safety. But he looks right past Pena. You're going to watch him focus on the outside receiver with his eyes when he gets over the rotation, and then he puts his out outside, eyes outside. Pena runs right down that seam past the other deep safety. And it is good night. They may have found a matchup they like with those Clemson safeties. On second and one, it's Big Cinco for the first down. We talked about the slow pace on the other side for Syracuse. It almost looked they were running four-minute offense down late in this game. Clemson now can take the time to eat this clock, milk this thing, as they do what this offense has done all night, matriculate slowly downfield. Oyunglele keeps it. And the zone read to the 40-yard line, a gain of four, second and six. Both teams with the full complement of timeouts. Been a fun one tonight. Ishraf, Mike Golick Jr., Taylor McGregor. I'll give Clemson's offense a lot of credit, Anish. There's been mistakes. There's been drops and penalties. But they haven't blinked down the stretch here. And they've stepped up and made huge plays when needed. Let's see if DJ's got a few more. Syracuse crowding the box. Uyunglele. Got a yard, maybe two. It's third down. Mikel Jones with the stop. We saw him earlier in this game hit Davis Allen coming out of the backfield. You wonder if they get Sage Ennis that same chance. Because I got to imagine Syracuse is going to bring bodies down here. Try and rile up DJ in that backfield. Play clock down to two, and Clemson will use its first timeout. What does Dabo Sweeney dial up here? Tony Elliott, his offensive coordinator. He's come under fire, and Dabo Sweeney, a staunch defender of Elliott this week, told us, hey, this is the guy who called the plays to beat Bama twice. And when Bama beat Clemson in the championship, Clemson put up five, 600 yards worth of total offense. He said, just like DJ didn't forget how to throw the ball, Tony didn't forget how to call plays. Yes, this offense is a work in progress. I think every Clemson fan would tell you they expected to see 
a little more from this offense, especially coming off the bye week, and especially considering the fact there were signs of progress in the BC game. There were, but this is always an offense that has been dependent on big-time talent to make huge plays for them. And they've had guys at quarterback, running back, and receiver to do it. So who's the guy you go to now? I think Justin Ross has been your guy in big moments all night. In the slot, right here in the free receiver side. He's got five catches. Pressure coming. Incomplete. They wanted Ross covered by the safety, Eric Coley. And Syracuse's defense forces a punt. You know who else knew it? Syracuse on defense. Great job being physical again all night. These defensive backs have been allowed to play. You get a great three-man game up front with the D-line to get a little pressure on DJ. And boy, oh boy, hold on to your butts. Trevor Pena, who had the long touchdown catch, waits back at the 19. The punt by Spires. Chases Pena back from inside the 10. Slips one. Stiff arm across the 20 and a flag back at the 15. Doing the return, illegal block in the back. Receiver team number 24. Half the distance to the goal. First down, Syracuse. Easy one for the officials right there. Pushing the back right by the ball carrier. And it's never been an easy one for Syracuse tonight in terms of field position. They're going to have to grind to work this one. And definitely going to have to up the tempo now compared to what we saw that last drive. Very little has come easy for both of these teams this season. Clemson 1-1 one one in conference play. Syracuse 0-2. This is the Tigers' first game as an unranked team since November 22nd, 2014. Handoff is to Sean Tucker. Bullying through that Tiger defense close to the 20-yard line. And he's got a first down, a run of 12, his best play of this second half. And now you're starting to see a little tempo from this Q's offense up on the ball, ready to rock. And a flag. Ball start. Offense number 76. Five-yard penalty. First down. That's Kalen Ellis. He's the freshman from Hawaii who stepped in when Chris Bleich couldn't continue. Big player, a guy they think has a lot of upside here. Tons of athletic ability at his side, but having to hold your water in these critical moments where that youth shows up. Last week in the loss to Wake Forest, Syracuse went on a 94-yard drive at the end of regulation to tie the game. Schrader pumps, moving the pocket, throws back over the middle, incomplete for Elmore. Second and 15. Elmore checks out. They'll bring in Devon Cooper. You're seeing them subs to match on Clemson's side for defense here. Yeah, they bring in some big guns, Xavier Thomas and Miles Murphy. Two pass rushing stars on the perimeter there. And now. Prior to the snap. Timeout, Clemson. Their second. 30 second timeout. They only had 10 guys on the field. And you saw James Skalski going over here and giving it to the coaches a little bit. Subbing in on that play here. Your leader on defense. And Clemson now down to its final timeout as we check in with Matt. 
Golick Jr., speaking of leaders on defense, Kayvon Thibodeau in uniform, ready to go for the ninth-ranked Oregon Ducks, coming off the loss to Stanford out of their bye week. We'll start this over on ESPN News. We'll move it here to ESPN at the conclusion of your game. I wonder who's going to call the plays for Oregon with Joe Moorhead out with an illness. Yeah, the undisclosed surgery that had him miss the Stanford game. He's been such an asset for them, a dynamic play caller out there for Mario Cristobal's outfit that we know is led by that great defense with Kayvon Thibodeau. Second down, 15 to go. There's Thomas off the edge. He hit Schrader incomplete. That burst by Xavier Thomas. Boy, he just sped off the line of scrimmage. What a career for Xavier Thomas. Strip trimmed down a lot this year. Active hands on the perimeter and just blows right past Carlos Veterello. He's looked great this season. I, I think it's some of the best shape of his career. Well, Trevor Pena is in. Do you go YOLO one more time on third and 15? I think you've definitely got to attack the safeties. That was where you got the great matchup the time before. If you're looking at this Clemson defensive backfield, that's the area where you can find a matchup win. Schrader steps up. Has a wide open Alford. Who gets the first down for Syracuse? The freshman from Montreal. Every time you think Schrader's done. Four-man rush here. Great job by the offensive line. It almost turns into a Hail Mary situation. And then they're so concerned about Pena, everyone's back past the sticks. And so all Damian Alford has to do is come back to the ball. He's got so much room to run. What do you got? Two of your last three on YOLO now? It's a lifestyle apparently up here. Tucker. And he is met by Xavier Thomas first. A loss of a yard. You know what we talked about all those injuries on the interior for Clemson's D-line? Trey Williams, the freshman, just forklifting <laughs> the left side of that line. That is a large man wearing a single digit, and you know that warms my heart. He's played exceptional. A snowman in a white jersey. Look at God. Second and 11. Here's the blitz. Schrader downfield. Alford cannot hang on. Nate Wiggins in coverage for Clemson. And it brings up third down. Syracuse starting to take more shots downfield, but Alford is down now. And not a lot of depth at that receiver position. Not a lot of proven bodies. Taj Harris, the best receiver for Syracuse, entered the transfer portal. Boy, that is a lot of contact they're letting them get away with. Nate Wiggins. You know, they've, got his called, hand that up all, under they've his chin. called it that way all night, though. And it's been consistent. You're right. By the fourth quarter, it's on everyone involved to adjust. You go over on the sideline as wide receivers, really after the first couple of series, and say, all right, this is how we're calling it. Now it's on us to respond. They are still tending to Alford. For those of you looking to watch Oregon and Cal over in Eugene, that game will begin on ESPN News. 2.31 to go. Third down coming up for Syracuse. Clemson with one timeout. Syracuse has all three timeouts, but again, given the caliber of the opponent, is this four down territory for the Orange? I think absolutely. I know your defense has been playing well, but this is not an offense that's been quick strike save for a couple of these plays here. I don't think you can rely on that. I think you got to put your foot down on the gas pedal right now, try and finish this game on this drive. How much of it is dependent on what happens here on third down as Alford is walking toward the Syracuse sideline? And that's why I think you give that information to your offensive coordinator right now and say, call this with two plays in mind. And last week, remember at the end of the game, there was a big decision for Syracuse. They get a touchdown late. Do they go for two in the win? And Dino Baber said initially he wanted to kick. 
And then after the touchdown, decided, no, let's go for two. They couldn't get back out on the field. There was a delay of game. They end up kicking and go to overtime when Wake Forest won the game. Schrader looking to the sideline. Play clock in single digits. Spectre now backs up for Clemson. Schrader looking for Tucker and Skalski eats him up right away. Fourth down. And we get a timeout from Syracuse, and this is the decision. Timeout. Syracuse, their first. 30 second timeout. I think it's fourth in the game right here. I think you're going to have to end up going for it here. You use that timeout, that tells me you're drawing something up because otherwise you would want that third timeout if you're going to punt. Exactly. So now, what's worked for you? We talked about the big plays, four verticals, going and trying to attack these safeties down the seam, using that deep threat to draw something open underneath. You haven't had one necessarily go-to receiver, but it's going to involve this offensive line, I'm sure, getting Schrader on the perimeter. That's where he's been most comfortable tonight, getting to roll outside of the protection, getting on the perimeter almost like a Hail Mary, and then having time to plant and let that thing loose. Syracuse tonight, one for one on fourth down. Three for six on the season. This is the ninth ACC game between these two. Clemson has taken up residence in the ACC penthouse. Syracuse, for a lot of its ACC tenure, has been trying to fight their way out of the gulags. Yet there have been fourth quarter games in 2014, 15, 17, and 18. And again in 2021. Empty set. Fourth and seven. The Orange need the 40. Three-man pressure. Schrader rolling out. Throws. He's got an open receiver. It's Queeley's. And a first down into Clemson territory. A gain of 18. 2.15 to go. That's a direct result of what we saw on the touchdown before. Brent Venables gambles, goes for the blitz, and gets burned. So that time, you drop everyone back into coverage, and you're too soft near the sticks. The kicker for Syracuse, Andre Schmidt, a former Groza Award winner. You're indoors, no elements. His career long is 54. The handoff is to Tucker. And he's close to the 40 of Clemson. Second and short, Spectre the tackle. This is a great opportunity to pop those because now Clemson's really backed off here. Your end of the game, you don't want to give up the big play in the touchdown. Back to Tucker. And he'll move the chains for Syracuse. This Clemson defense has been here. We saw them make a stand against Georgia Tech late. We saw them make a stand against Boston College late. BC then fumbled it away. So many veterans on this side of the ball. We knew that story with them coming back. All that experience means you're battle tested. You've been in these moments. So the communication from 47 out going to be paramount. Clock continues to run. 105 now. Schrader downfield for Queeley. Almost intercepted. Mario Goodrich almost ended it. If they score on this drive, Anthony Queeley and the play he made here, receiver turning into a defender. Watch him come back over the top of this. This ball should have been picked, but Queeley comes over the top, punches that thing out. Extra effort, incredible. Abdul Adams into the game. Five wide on second down. Less than a minute to go. Schrader's throw caught by Jackson. He's to the 32. It brings up third and short. You're not seeing that much of an urgency Come from Syracuse out. now. Here, it looks like second. a good call timeout. 30 seconds timeout. And out. that'll stop the clock with 54 seconds to go. One timeout remaining for both teams. So now the priority becomes the first down here. If you're Syracuse, you want to keep that first down in your pocket, making sure going forward. So if you've got to get the field goal team out there, it doesn't become what we would call a NASCAR situation. No timeouts. you got to have them ready to run out there on the field and the fly. So 
getting up, getting this first down here with only one timeout left. If you've got to get up to the line and spike it after that, that's got to be the move from here on out to preserve that timeout. Another test for this Clemson defense late in the game and a chance at a little redemption for Dino Babers, who we told you was criticized for some of his late game decisions against Florida State and against Wake Forest. I think long and hard about running the quarterback here potentially. I haven't seen him pull it in a while. From the 31, the give is to Tucker. And a first down for Syracuse. Let's see. Wait. They backed up on the spot. This looks awfully close. He's short. It's fourth down. And another timeout by Syracuse. So Dino Babers uses his last timeout. Is this a decision? Do you kick the field goal? Timeout, or Syracuse. Do you actually go for timeout. it? 40-second timeout. What do you do here? With the kicker you've got here, you're going to probably have to put it on his leg at this point. Your offense... You're not inside the 10 here, right? Is that the approach? You're thinking about it. I'm thinking long and hard because Anish, my, my proclivity is to usually go for it on fourth down here. They've struggled on fourth down, but this is fourth and short with one of the best running backs in college football. But at the end of the day, you've got an opportunity in close range to tie this game down the stretch. Schmidt is coming out. Now this season, he's only one of four from beyond 40. Earlier tonight, he became the school's all-time scoring leader. Mike Midkiff to hold. And Aaron Bolinski is the long snapper. For the tie from 48. This would match his season long. Schmidt's kick is up and no good. A lot of questions going to be asked once again about what you do here. If you're going to kick it, why are you calling timeouts? Why not bleed down more clock? That's going to be a lot of the issue Syracuse fans once again have is if you have a plan, stick with it and operate by that the entire way if you know you're going to kick when you get into that range. If you're calling timeout, then go for it on fourth down here. It's just indecisiveness, it seems, once again. It's been something that has happened a lot. And it's something Dino Babers will have to answer for again. Clemson will take a knee. They're going to escape Central New York with a three-point win. The Tigers will get their fifth win of the season by one score. And really for Syracuse, another game that comes down to the end in ACC play. And they come up short again. Game track is brought to you by Mission Tiger. DJ Uyunglele, you saw the numbers there. 181 through the air, a touchdown. Clemson avoids an upset on this Friday at the Carrier Dome, holding on 17-14. to This Clemson offense like a brisket, low and slow, but they've managed to get the job done coming off the bye. Still a lot to clean up, but playmakers finally starting to step up, make some of those grabs for you. All the difference in the game tonight. And Clemson's defense made a number of plays throughout the game. The Tigers hold on. They go to 2-1 and one in conference, 4-2 and two on the season. For Taylor McGregor and Mike Golick Jr., I'm Anish Shroff. Our final score, Clemson 17, the Q's 14, off to Austin, Cal in Oregon. Here's Beth Moens.